uh, getting my tail kicked, uh, <laughs> uh, coming on a national scene. But also, you know, I'm from New Jersey. So, you know, being from the tri-state area, you know, the Big East obviously was rocking and you think you know what basketball is. And then all of a sudden you come to a town like Ames and you're like, oh, okay, this is basketball on a different level. These are these are fans who, I mean, I'm not taking anything away from the East Coast and they still support the game, but this is a different level with the attention to detail the fans have and how avid they are about their teams. I, I think it needs to go to places where we're going to have the best atmosphere. I think it's about having the best atmosphere. And there's certain places that I'm sure game day has tried throughout our tenure and they haven't necessarily been to the best atmospheres. And, you know, I think that's where we're trying to, you know, really focus our attention on. And a place like it, like this is going to have an amazing atmosphere tomorrow. And I can tell you from somebody who's been in studio and somebody who's been in a ton of great atmospheres, there's nothing better than trying to, to have it actually translate across the television screen. If you're at home, feeling the excitement, you can actually feel the vibrations off of the TV, of the atmosphere that you're about to see. And, and that's what Hilton Coliseum is going to have tomorrow. Same way he is as a coach. It's mind-blowing to me. Um, you know, as a player, he, he would talk, but he would never raise his voice. And it, it was always interesting to me because I would like, right, yell at me, even though you're not Bill Cartwright, yell at me, tell me what I'm doing wrong. Uh, but those are the kind of conversations we would have. And it, it's all about how you communicate to somebody and in a very effective manner. And even watching him go through practice today, he tells you where you need to be. He's very firm with his statements. He tells you what he expects. And if you don't follow suit, then you pay the consequences. But he's not going to be that guy that's going to get in your face and, and ream you out like that. That's not his style, uh, which is more of a player's, co a player's coaching style. One, yeah, he can still shoot that thing, trust me. That, that's one thing he was great at doing. Fred, uh, the reason why not only I say he was going to be a great coach, not only the way he was able to communicate with his players, but his ability to understand spacing on the floor. And you think about the team that he's been able to create here with the inside-outside presence and having a guy with the versatile skill set of George Niang and having the shooters surrounding George. Uh, that's exactly the way Fred played as a player. Uh, he understood how to pick and pop, how to pick and roll. Uh, just listening to him and, and Seth Greenberg, who was a basketball fanatic, uh, talk hoops for the past 10 minutes, my brain was spinning. I think I know basketball, and then I hear them talk, and I'm like, I have a long way to go. It's always going to be a challenge. First off, let me say this. Uh, it was a heartbreaking loss for Iowa State uh, last game on the road against Baylor. But I also thought it was a game they should have won. I thought that should have been an offensive foul on Kenny Cherry then. There's no way Monte Morris slips like that. So, But those games do happen. Uh, and now transitioning back to KU, they have to find a way to keep KU off the boards. I mean, Cliff Alexander and Perry Ellis have been playing extremely well as of late. Uh, having Devontae Graham back for them helps and moves Frank Mason a little bit over to the two-guard spot. Takes away some of his responsibilities as a point guard. And, and, and for Kansas, they have to run you know, to run Iowa State off the three-point line. And they have to find different ways to stay down and stay disciplined in their sets. Because I tell you, Fred and Iowa State, the way they run their sets, I mean, they, they're sharp, they're precise. And if you get caught sleeping, uh, they will be effective and take advantage of it. Well, you know, look, I, I'm, I'm not one of those believers at the beginning of the year people were saying, Oh, well, the, the favorite is Kansas because they won 10 straight. You know, I've been a big believer of it doesn't matter what you did last year or the year prior or 10 years prior. All that matters is what you're doing this year in day to day. Um, obviously, Kansas being 3 in the league, I, I think to win a conference like the Big 12, you have to take care of your home court have to take care of your home court. That's that's the foremost priority. And for Iowa State to show that they want to be a contender in the Big 12, you got to take care of home court. Doesn't matter who you're playing against. Doesn't matter if it's Texas coming to town, Kansas, Kansas State, Oklahoma, take care of business at home. I, I think Monte Morris has a chance to be great. Uh, Monte Morris is the only person that could tell you the answer to that question. I can't. Um, it, it obviously, he showed leaps and bounds with the way he's played this year. He needs to continue to progress. And I also think a, a reason why he is able to be great, and it's to take nothing away from him, but you're great when you play with great players too and guys who understand how to play. You know, people would say to me back when I was in college, oh, you're a great point guard. I'm like, well, I'm okay, but I'm also playing with Shane Battier, Carlos Boozer, Dante Jones. I'm playing with great players. And when you play with guys who understand spacing and how to operate, how to communicate, you know, how to actually hit somebody on the ball screen and can finish your plays, if you don't have anybody that can finish your plays, I would say you don't have six or seven assists a game. Uh, but obviously, I think the ceiling is extremely high for that young man. I, at the beginning of the year, I did not think he was a top five point guard nation. Now I think he's a top three.